Considering how much Uber has impacted things, it's strange to think that they didn't even exist until 2009. It was founded by two men, Travis Kalanick and Garrett Camp, who had each separately founded their own companies that, coincidentally, were both sold for millions of dollars in 2007. Soon after, they connected with each other at a tech conference where they just happened to have some trouble hailing a cab. The experience got them thinking, and together they came up with this idea that eventually led to the creation of Uber. It's funny to think that if they had been able to get a cab a little quicker that day, the whole transportation industry would likely look a lot different. Because the fact is that Uber has made an impact on it. Taxis have been negatively affected, many argue the same goes for rental cars, but on the other end, it's led to the creation of other similar services, most notably Lyft. But also over that short time, Uber has managed to become one of the most controversial, I would even say most hated companies out there. Even they recognize it, they've been making efforts to repair their reputation. This right here comes out of one of their SEC filings. We have previously received significant media coverage and negative publicity, particularly in 2017, regarding our brand and reputation. I have to admit that 2017 probably was the worst for them, but there have been plenty of issues extending before that and after. Over the last decade, they would have to be among the most scandalous, but I would argue that their range of scandals is unrivaled. So today, I'm gonna be categorizing these into eight separate categories. And I promise, I'm not trying to pick at every little thing they've done wrong or that has received negative media attention. I think you'll agree that these are all pretty major reasons behind all of this hatred. Starting with possibly the biggest, their employee relations. Or more technically, I should say their contracted worker relations. You know what, how about this? Their driver relations. That's the big argument, whether their drivers should be classified as employees or contracted workers. I'm pretty sure that for as long as Uber exists, this will forever be an argument. They are currently classified as independent contractors, and Uber says that's clearly the way it should be, because they choose when they want to work, where they want to work, they provide their own vehicles, and they're free to drive for a competitor such as Lyft. The way they operate and whether it should be considered a technology or transportation company comes into question. There's no straightforward answers, but the issue is that if they're forced to classify them as employees, then they have to start worrying about minimum wage and benefits, and their expenses are going to go through the roof. It has been really threatening their operations in California because it's been a constant battle to keep that contractor status. And quite honestly, if it's changed, I don't know if they can afford the extra expenses. They already don't really make any money, so something like that can really hurt them. Some of the drivers like the freedom of being an independent contractor, while some of them see it as somewhat of a loophole that Uber uses to avoid paying them. It's an issue that's upset many of their drivers and much of the general public. Other issues involving their driver relations, in January of 2017, the FTC claimed that many of the rates earned by Uber drivers were in reality much lower than they advertised on their website. They paid a $20 million settlement connected with that one. And then a few months later, they admitted to some kind of an accounting mistake that made Uber take too much from their customers' fares and didn't leave enough for the drivers. It was isolated to New York, but it still resulted in millions of dollars that they had to repay the drivers. Also, when they had their IPO in 2019, some of the Uber drivers went on strike and protested out outside of their headquarters, I think further showing a poor relationship between Uber and their drivers. There's more that could be said here, but you get the idea. Another scandal slash controversy involves attempts to steal drivers from their rivals. Going back to almost the beginning of Lyft, they were offering incentives such as sign-on bonuses to get Lyft drivers to drive for Uber. But then in 2014, things got a little shadier. Early in the year, they targeted a competitor called Get, where over a few day span, Uber employees were actually ordering over a hundred rides from their service and then quickly canceling them. The intention was likely to waste their time and clog up the system. Potential get customers couldn't, well, get rides because they were busy with these fake Uber calls. Then, to take it a step further, the Uber employees obtained the driver's numbers through this, so they started contacting them and trying to convince them to drive for Uber. Uber has admitted to requesting these rides and called it an aggressive sales tactic, but I would consider it more underhanded than anything. 
anything. And then later in that same year, Lyft claimed that Uber was doing something very similar to them. They claimed that over the year span, 177 Uber employees from all over the place booked and then quickly canceled more than 5,000 rides from them. All right, back to the list. Another one would be their surge pricing. They have dramatically changed their prices based on the demand for the service. The customers generally dislike this, of course, especially in certain circumstances. The first big example would be New Year's Eve of 2011. You might expect to pay a premium at a busy time like that, but some of the customers got pretty upset when they learned that they were charging up to six times the normal rate. Less than a year later, they were doing the same thing when the demand went up due to Hurricane Sandy, essentially profiting off of a natural disaster. And then possibly the biggest one, in early 2017, there was this taxi strike at JFK Airport. It was a response to Donald Trump's travel ban from seven Muslim countries. The whole thing gets political. But Uber continued operating during the strike, and then right after, when the demand was really high, they got rid of the surge pricing and charged the normal rates. This whole thing goes pretty deep, and I recommend you look into it to get the full story. It's hard to know what their intentions were and exactly what was happening with all of this, but it definitely was not good for their reputation. Many people saw this as supporting the travel ban and trying to take advantage of the taxi strike. It led to the trending hashtag delete Uber that actually motivated hundreds of thousands of people to delete their Uber accounts. Here's another big one. How about safety concerns? Riding in a car like this is an inherently vulnerable situation, so I'd say it's up to Uber to try to make things as reasonably safe as they can. There have been thousands of sexual assault claims. Whether Uber is at fault or not, you'd have to look into each incident, but there have been a lot of incidents from all over the place that have generated some negative publicity for them. Uh, there's so many, but some of the bigger ones, there was an Uber driver in the US accused of shooting and killing six people in 2016. The service was banned in the capital of India after this rape accusation. In 2017, they lost their license to operate in London, mostly due to safety concerns of the service. I would say that the very core of these safety measures would be the background checks for the drivers, which have also received a lot of negative attention. In 2016, there was this class action lawsuit involving 25 million passengers claiming Uber background checks were not as good as advertised. The company was calling them industry leading, but they didn't require fingerprinting while some of their competitors did, so how can that be industry leading? That was the basis of the lawsuit that ended in a $28.5 million settlement. Considering it was distributed to 25 million people, no one made much money there, but I think the bigger victory is the condition in the settlement that said Uber can no longer use that type of terminology when referring to their background checks. Related to this, I should mention that they also pulled their service from Austin, Texas because they required those fingerprints. Uber has just had a lot of incidents and safety concerns seemingly more than their competitors. To go along with this, the sexual harassment at their corporate buildings has been a big issue. In 2017, a woman named Susan Fowler famously came forward about her experience with it during the time she worked at Uber. That led to an investigation of the company that resulted in firing over 20 employees a few months later. In that same year, their senior vice president of engineering stepped down during similar allegations, and a board member resigned after making a sexist joke during a meeting about sexual harassment. Their former CEO and founder that I mentioned earlier, Travis Kalanick, has also had similar issues. In fact, there's enough to put him into his own category. The company culture that he created over at Uber was concerning. To my knowledge, his earliest scandal was in 2013, when he sent out this terribly inappropriate letter within the company. I'm not gonna read from it, but it outlined some unprofessional rules for an upcoming party. Then, in early 2017, really was a bad year for them, this video surfaced where he started to lose his temper during an argument with an Uber driver. They blame everything but why you send an else? email for town car? Good luck. Again, the head of Uber yelling at an Uber driver brought them some bad publicity. He did issue an apology, but still, I just don't think that this is the best person to be representing the company. The investors likely felt the same way. I say that because in June of that year, they demanded that he resign from his position, which he did. Kalanick is also involved in my next point, which is their cyber attack. I told you, these scandals just keep coming from all angles. In 2016, they were the victim of a cyber attack, where the hackers gained access to the personal data of their drivers and customers. I'm talking about names, phone numbers, email addresses, driver's license numbers for the drivers. It was big in itself, but the real trouble started when they tried to cover it up. It is believed that Travis Kalanick and others at Uber knew about the attack a month after it happened, yet it 
took over a year for them to disclose anything about it, when by the way, he wasn't even part of the company anymore. Instead of disclosing it, they chose to pay those hackers about $100,000 to delete the data that they had stolen and promised not to tell anyone about what happened. In the end, they agreed to pay a $148 million settlement in connection with this cover-up. The final thing that I want to talk about here is their self-driving vehicles, because even those have been the focus of negative media attention. In 2016, they started driving customers around San Francisco in these self-driving cars without securing the necessary permits first. There's a big argument tied to this one too, but I'm pretty sure that you have to get the okay to do that, otherwise it's illegal. What made things worse is once they were out there illegally delivering passengers, they also started breaking traffic laws, things like running red lights. It was a disaster. The government forced Uber to take those cars off the road, and the public was given yet another reason to criticize Uber. Then, as if that wasn't bad enough, a year and a half later, one of those self-driving cars actually killed someone. It was going 40 miles an hour, and I guess since that person was jaywalking on the road, the car was unable to tell that it was a person. So there we have it. Numerous scandals and controversies, all involving Uber, spread across eight mostly separate categories, all within the past decade. And I challenge you to find another company that has had a wider range of them over this period of time. I should mention that this is by no means a comprehensive list either. These are the ones that I thought to be bigger, more impactful, or simply more interesting. Things have calmed down a bit since 2017. There's been new leadership and some big time marketing efforts to repair their image, but my gosh, this is a lot to come back from. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Uber? Has your perception of them gotten better, or was it never bad in the first place? Maybe you just liked the service and didn't even know all this was happening, and if that's the case, has anything changed after watching this video, and what part of it stood out to you the most? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.